On December 20th, 1951, the world's first nuclear power plant, the EBR-1 Experimental Reactor, began operation in the U.S. state of Idaho. This was followed in 1954 by the Omanisk nuclear power plant in what was then the Soviet Union. And in 1956, Calder Hall in the United Kingdom became the first commercial nuclear power plant to feed electricity into the public grid. By the time it was ready, hundreds of scientists around the world were working on a new technology to satisfy the world's hunger for electricity in the simplest and most effective way possible. For a long time, people thought that the invention of nuclear power was not only an enormous technical advance, but also the excellent achievement of a very highly developed human race. That this was a mistake is shown not only by the environmental catastrophe that we have brought about through the excessive use of nuclear power, but also by a completely different circumstance. The physicists of the early 20th century were, to all appearances, seriously mistaken when they thought they had reinvented nuclear power. Before we introduce you to the true origin of nuclear power, and probably the oldest nuclear reactor on Earth, we invite you to subscribe to our channel. If you also activate the notification bell, you will never miss a new video in the future. Of course, we are also happy about a like if you like this video. Even if you are not that interested in physics and technology, you will be shocked by this video. Because we're about to show you that nuclear power existed on this Earth an incredible 1.8 billion years ago. And of course, we're going to explore the question of who used this power back then. The Discovery of the Oldest Nuclear Reactor in the World In 1972, a French company began importing uranium ore from Oklo in the African Republic of Gabon. Uranium ore is a highly sought-after raw material because it is indispensable in the nuclear industry. The mine in southern Gabon proved to be valuable and a perfect mining site for the coveted ore. When work began in the 1970s, no one had any idea that the Oklo mines were hiding something that was to shock the world. At first, the rocks that were of high quality and had the very concentrations of uranium that Western companies were so desperately seeking. A little deeper in the mine, the miners eventually found ore that was suddenly quite different. The unusual samples were examined in the laboratory in France. This revealed something monstrous because normally the samples contained three isotopes of uranium. This means that the uranium was present in the rock in three forms with different atomic masses. Uranium-238 is the most abundant type, uranium-234 is the rarest of the three isotopes, and uranium-235 is the most desirable isotope because it can independently sustain a nuclear chain reaction. In the samples that stood out, U-235 was present in such low concentrations that it appeared to scientists that the uranium ore had already been burned up. It had been virtually used up, and the very low uranium content of 0.717% was no longer sufficient for use in nuclear power plants. But how could this be? In plain English, it meant that nuclear reactions must have been going on in the mine. Researchers wondered whether they were dealing with a natural find or whether the mines of Gabon might in fact have been something other than natural caves with an unusually rich deposit of uranium ore. Further investigation in the field revealed even more incredible details. The samples alone that were examined in France, which had apparently already undergone a nuclear reaction, amounted to 200 kilograms, roughly the power of half a dozen atomic bombs. In the cave in Gabon, the researchers then found much more spent uranium ore. However, there were no traces of detonation or extreme nuclear reaction far and wide. This meant nothing less than the nuclear reaction in the cave in Gabon had taken place under controlled circumstances. The other traces are also indicated that the nuclear use of the cave, which is about 2 billion years old, must have lasted for about 500,000 years. During this period, a controlled and sustained reaction must have released a thermal power of up to 100 kilowatts and several hundred terawatt hours of energy. This is roughly equivalent to the amount of energy produced by an average nuclear power plant over the period of a few decades. In the course of the nuclear reaction, a total of about 10 tons of uranium-235 was split, and as a byproduct, about 4 tons of radioactive plutonium-239 was hatched. Since the half-life of plutonium-239 is 24,110 years, the remains have long since decayed by today, of course. 
The highly radiated nuclear waste that causes so many problems for us humans today has naturally dissipated in the mine in Gabon over the last 1.5 billion years. There was a great horror among scientists when these facts and figures became known internationally. A technology that 20th century physicists had laboriously researched for years was said to have existed 2 billion years ago. Shocking, 2 billion year old nuclear reactor. After the alarming findings, scientists from around the world met in Gabon to study the incredible phenomenon. In the process, some of the experts discovered that the supposed mine from which the uranium ore came basically did not look like a natural phenomenon, but much more like a very technical underground nuclear reactor. Despite these similarities, however, technical components such as pipes, cooling towers, or control cabinets were missing. The age of the facility could be dated to about 1.8 billion years, and the nuclear reactions took place on site for about 500,000 years, as already mentioned. Once again, it was confirmed by dozens of experts that the nuclear reactions in Oklo were moderate and thus clearly proceeded in an inexplicably controlled manner. But who should have operated a nuclear reactor at this place 1.8 billion years ago with a hitherto unknown technique? That this could have been a purely natural process was initially ruled out. Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, former head of the United States Atomic Energy Commission and Nobel laureate for his work on the isolation and identification of transuronics, told the press that he believed it was not a natural phenomenon, but a man-made facility. To burn uranium in a reactor, exact conditions must exist. Water of the highest purity must slow down the neutrons to the speed required for nuclear fission. In the process, the water normally heats up extremely and evaporates. We take advantage of this effect to generate energy because the water vapor drives gigantic turbines in power plants that produce electricity. In nuclear power plants, only specially treated water can be used for this purpose, which, according to Dr. Glenn T. Seaborg, would never occur in nature in this form. But it looks like the atomic expert was very much mistaken at the time. For in 1956, the American Japanese chemist and atomic expert, Paul Karuda, had also pointed out in a scientific paper that the possibility of a nuclear chain reaction also exists within free nature. Finally, even the doubters of this fact had to acknowledge and admit that nature can be at least as intelligent as men and possibly produced a natural nuclear reactor two billion years ago. Too precise to be natural. The speculations around the true origin of the reactor in Africa continues nevertheless. Again and again, voices were raised that this atomic reaction had not been right, as if one suspected that another creator could be behind this early power plant. 30 years after the first hype about the natural reactors in Gabon, nuclear physicist Alex Meshik from Washington University in St. Louis and his colleagues conducted research in Oklo again. Once again, unbelievable facts emerged. Traces in the rock indicated that the natural reactor ran for exactly 30 minutes and then shut down for two or two and a half hours before it started generating energy again. Further investigations of the mine also revealed that the nuclear reactions took place at several separate sites. Although many questions again rose about how such temporal precision could fit into a natural sequence, Alex Mishnik's team found an explanation. The time period of 30 minutes and two to two and a half hours matched the rhythm at which water seeped into the reactor from the outside. By percolating through multiple layers of sand and rock, the water also achieved the high purity necessary for a moderated nuclear reaction. If the seeped-in water had boiled away after half an hour, the reaction stopped. If sufficient new water had seeped in, the nuclear reactor resumed its work. Can there be other explanations? Despite the natural explanation, scientists and atomic experts to this day concede that the Oklo reactor resembles a miracle in its construction and function. Ideas that the caves may have once served as an energy source for early human civilizations or even extraterrestrial visitors seem fantastic, and they fit in with the persistent rumors that early civilizations such as the ancient Egyptians, the Mayans, and even the Vedas had secret energy sources and reactors. Only we have to realize that the reactors in Gabon generated energy 1.5 to 2 billion years ago. Ancient Egypt 
was a culture that existed 3,000 to 10,000 years ago. First traces of the Maya appeared 4,000 years ago, and the Vedas existed 3,000 to 5,000 years ago. These are very short periods of time compared to the age of the reactors in Gabon. Two billion years ago, the Earth's mantle probably cooled slowly so that it could support the first large land masses. If there were life on Earth, it was bacterial, unicellular organisms, or the simplest algae species. Even if there are now and then hints that so far unknown human advanced civilizations could have existed 50,000 or 100,000 years ago, it can be excluded with almost certainty that human-like beings existed on Earth 1.5 or 2 billion years ago. So the total of 14 natural reactors in the Oklo Basin have truly been a fantastic freak of nature showing us humans that everything we think is artificial or a man-made invention ultimately comes from nature in some way. Today's researchers, meanwhile, continue to use the Oklo reactors to study nature's procedures with highly radioactive nuclear waste. At Oklo, the waste degraded as naturally as it was created. This gives hope to today's scientists and the world at large that our large amounts of radioactive plutonium can eventually be processed by the Earth and not be a burden to future generations. To conclude this video, as always, we're interested in your personal opinion. What do you think about the findings in Oklo? Are you familiar with nuclear reactors? And do you share the opinion that this is an incredible occurrence? Or do you firmly believe that miracles like this are actually quite normal in nature? Use the comment function for your contributions and see you soon at Hidden Worlds.